Welcome back to another episode of Mighty Master Yudamakun. We're slowly catching up to. I think it's gonna be about episode 9 or 10 when I do fully catch up. But we're getting there. What happened last time? New semester, new term. Um, we gotta get to rank four before we, I guess, finish first year. But then in Babylon, usually rank four is achieved by the time you graduate. But we're different, right? We're built different. Kyle goes like, oh, you wanna learn in the the number one, the royal one classroom? Well, you gotta have other standards, right? The most just bizarre thing that just blew me away. There is another student in the misfit class that has never spoken up, done anything throughout two seasons, but he's been there since the beginning. Is he a ghost? What the fuck is going on? There's one character with like gray silver hair, not me, dotted eyes, that just was in the corner for some scenes that I'm like, I don't remember this dude. What, where were you? I, what, what? I don't know, but they saved him for something. So I expect something really hype from him. I hope uh, we got new tutors. Sorry, like actual one on one tutors to help us out. The most interesting of them is probably the cryberry one because she's like, I thought it would go with like the standard like mermaid waifu, but she has like a duck beak and stick. So that was like, an interesting design. But on top of that, she's just crying the entire time. And she said crybabies can do something too. I don't really know. Also, Iruma and Shax. Shax never really got much screen time in season one or season two. Like, he doesn't really stand out. Like, and again, compared to other misfits, like even someone like Jazz, um, who got more screen time than Shax. Now Shax seems to be partnered up with Iruma. Is he gonna be important? Looking at the poster for season three, Shax does seem like kind of centered between Iruma, right? So I'm like, are they about to do something with this guy? I don't know. I don't know. But let's see what happens in today's episode. What is she actually doing though? Cause like, you know, have you seen the Karate Kid? Or like, there's like unconventional teachers that makes you do stuff which seems nothing to do with actual like progress. But then there's some kind of secret lessons ingrained that you would have never known. And because she was recommended by Sullivan. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, but are we doing anything? Have we learned anything? Yeah, but maybe this is kind of helping us. With I don't know, building up stamina. Eiko? Eiko's become like a paparazzi photographer. Also, yeah, Robin kind of just backed off. He's just letting his sister do all the work now. That's not good, though. You shouldn't live like that. I understand. That like, Irima has always been a pushover and it's still so ingrained into him. But that doesn't mean you should settle for that kind of lifestyle. You should always expect better things for yourself. But that's the character development needs to go through. Wait. Eiko and... Eiko... This is your time, Eiko. Make your move. Go talk to him, please. It's been all three seasons. Eiko! Do something! That's not Eiko. So. Shisho, that's right, we gotta call her Shisho, yes. That he's so thorough with the training, even though it's all nonsensical. But he does it, why? Because of his childhood. The willpower. Yeah, it's unmatched. So thanks to our shitty parents and our shitty childhood, he does have these qualities that makes him... The big <laughs> I was gonna say... <laughs> Uh, an amazing main character that will do anything for his friends, but she does have a point, you know. She does have a point. There's a great line, a very thin line between being naive and kind. Okay. What are you thinking? Oh, Ali was there. Did you see Ali? That's what you're thinking about, not about your own character development. Chest feels tight? Are you in luck? No, what do you mean? Are you getting- No, no, he's getting upset. Angry! Angry? <laughs> That's better. I thought for a second, he was like, I'm falling for her! No, 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 no. Moron, moron. Oh, the ponytail is up. You know what happens when Irima gets the ponytail on? Super serious mode. He's looking like he's back in the student council again. I will willingly. She's probably thinking, this moron became an even bigger moron. I mean, if it works out, sure. Maybe this is all according to the plan. Maybe she does need to have this mindset. Where is that? They're not going to show him in every scene with the misfits, but there is a missing student in here. 
Whereas, I don't see him. Mm. They only show him sometimes. Kaligo is, of course, so happy that his students are suffering. <laughs> but it's for their own good. Yeah, we know Kaligo cares about his students, but sometimes he's so brutally, like, happy about their misery. Are we revolting? Rise up. We need to unionize. That misfit character is not here. No, he's in the background. You saw the corner. No, no, no. He was in the top right corner. What the fuck? What? Is he just a joke character? Has it been going well? You guys just look... Just drenched. What is he? Okay. Only on the surface. This teacher is the most interesting to me because, like, she's advancing, you know, bloodline abilities. Balan is more generic in the sense of, like, I will just make you the most powerful, which just sounds cool, but, like, specifically tuning your bloodline ability. Sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, they're just getting drowned. So, or, so I guess... Shaq's went to Robin. Now, we're kind of separated, and Iruma is with uh, Bachiko now? Maybe? Concentration. Multitask. So, he's gonna play, like, 20 games at once? No, he's just gonna make him keep going. Robin just has infinite stamina? I mean, his entire thing is, like... Never giving up, like, willpower, I think, right? They, they've just been camped outside the entire time. One hit on Balam. You need to touch him at least once, but they can't reach him? Now, this is, like, the more, like, shonen battle training session with Sensei, yeah. They got, like, trans... For somewhere else, right? By that that red dude. Furu Furu. <laughs> what a name. Huh? Huh? Hmm? Something's going on. What's what's going on? What kind of transformation are they going on to? Huh? Help. SOS. Help? <laughs> I, uh, they'll be fine. I'm sure. Clara has been holding that post. Look! He's there! The, the, the ghost of the misfits! He's there! I can't believe I'm getting more hyped about him, but yeah, they've been posing the entire time. What's going on? Well, we learned from like the selection class before. The posing is important, but I don't think Clara's pose is really... I don't know. It's like, go like this. It's just more ridiculous, if anything. She's making her just like, as a stone, just stay there with the pose. That's hard in itself. I'm not sure if this is training sexiness or more of just like patience. We cross dress and do all kinds of errands for a goth Lolita character. Yeah. Yes. First, I have to boil water. Oh, water. Oh my god. And then? I have to pour it? Oh my god. Shopping? This is terrible. Discussion? What a horrifying monster of a teach. Not the food town. This is so ridiculous. What are we fucking doing? What are we doing? We're just doing her fucking errand boy stuff. Acknowledging you by calling you a moron? Yeah, you are a servant. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Clara is right. Clara is spot on. Why is she pointing to the sad world like that? <laughs> Look! Top right corner! There he is again! What is he? Who is he? Is it just a joke character? Is he meant to just never interact, but sometimes just be up here in like, in like scenes to make us be like, was he always there? The light's up. He should be shown. I... Somebody please mention the dude in the corner. Holy fuck. It's nice to see they're not giving up though. They're not giving up. Still holding that pose. Head over heels, but I'm sorry the ship with that has already left. Nah, nah, he's not falling for it. Don't bait me with that ship. Ugh, my heart's got a special spot for Clara though. Sullivan and Bachko. 
Ooh. Of course, Solomon just runs over Bachiko, yeah. It's fun to see, like, how Solomon acts with other characters, though, because, you know, his position... What kind of face is that? Huh? What are you grabbing, like, this for? The fuck? What do they got going on? She's, like, completely head over heels for Sullivan. Huh? Anything for you? The fuck? What is their history? Yep, are we really training, though? Is this really training? Because she's pretty much acknowledging we haven't done anything yet. God damn it. The regular shit. A weapon. Is this the arrow that he has with Ali? Right? Because in the poster, he does have some kind of like... Like a mini handgun arrow gun thingy in his hand. Clearly, it's the same material as Ali. Like, so with Ali, he's able to just form into like a... Handgun thing? A crossbow thing? I even gave you the benefit of doubt to think that this is training. That somehow, this is all disciplining you in some regard. I don't know. God damn it. But now we're going to actual training. Okay. Okay. We're going to form a weapon. Are you going to push him down? Fly? It's going to push him and survive? Yes. Meaning same bloodline. Oh, wait, what? Branch for main. Yeah, it's the arrow, right? It's like one shot. It can never, like, alter its course. It will always go. But this is nuts. Ooh. This is more like it, man. The winged devourer of despair. Undead archer. You're undead? Yo, that's like multiple. Robin only shot one that one time. She's shooting like 20. It's like 20 into one more combined. God damn. Okay, she's pretty sick. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. This is our teacher. And now she's gonna teach Yidma also how to do the same thing with Ali. With the, I don't know, hand bow thing. Under bullseyes. Without, as long as you concentrate though. The evolved version. He can only do one so Yo, I'm getting some uh What's the anime? Yu Yu Hakusho vibes with the handgun, but also he only has certain amounts he can fire per day. That kind of limit. Surely we're gonna have that kind of limit too, right? Three heroes of the great Wait, whoa, 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 what? This is some important lore. Three great heroes. Furufuru and the crybaby was also one of them. But we have all the patience in the world, baby. Alright, teach us how to make a bow too. With Ali. Beyond Dalit. Oh. What? Why? Because we don't have your bloodline ability? We're not a demon, though. He's not a demon, though. He's completely different. He's gonna learn it all. I hope he maybe even surpasses her. I'm trying to think. Because, like, in the poster, right? In the t season 3 designs, that little handbow Iduma had was kind of small. But I would imagine if he dialed it up to pan the rule and fucking shot it, I bet it's gonna be huge. Let's do it. But if we do that, then we have to kind of explain to her about Ali, right? Hmm. What's this? Isn't this our Magi app class? Battle apparatus? This is our old club room, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you know about this place? The fuck? This is... That's the episode. Things are looking a lot more promising than episode one. So far, I was like, what the fuck are we actually doing? But finally, we're getting, like, a cool weapon to be made. And it's gotta be the little handbow with Ali, right? At the end, though, the Magi app class. The, the Magi app, uh, the battle app. I forgot. Magical apparatus, weapon. You know, the club that we were in. Bal used to be in it. You know, Kitty was in it. We used to be in it. Bachiko knows about it. This is like, does every, did everybody fucking go here? No, I'm sure it's just like certain select people, but I'm glad that there's an actual thing that we're working for. We're going to create a gigantic bow 
and Iruma's gonna surpass like her expectation because she specifically said, you know, demons will never learn this. They have, they don't have the fucking, they, they, they don't have the personality or the desire to do it. No, Iruma's different. He built different, so he's totally gonna do it. This is gonna be so sick. Again, the little Hambo picture design that we saw in Scene 3 poster was kind of small, but I bet it's gonna be way bigger if he dials the ring to like Panderula, right? So that's gonna be amazing to see. And of course, who the fuck? is that character in the Misfits class that's never been introduced but just shows up in certain scenes. I think this is the most screen time we might have gotten. He was in the top right corner during that discussion with the Misfits in the dark the entire time. I'm okay, is he just a joke character? Am I supposed to like anticipate some huge payoff where they're just setting him up to be like, oh, I was a hidden member of the Misfits the entire time. I actually know all you guys, but you don't know me, that kind of thing. Or literally joke character where he's just always gonna be you know present sometimes but they're never gonna acknowledge him either or i think that'd be the funniest shit but i, I can't wait for the rest of this episode it's the season to pan out because new weapon new powers oh it's gonna be good it's gonna lead up to the harvest arc out here that's so hype but hey if you stick around the song and if you enjoy my reaction you already know what i'm gonna say check out the other videos it plays to my channel if you watch another video immediately after this one it helps the YouTube algo push out my small channel to be recommended so that I have a chance to compete with some of your favorite reactors. Until next time, guys, take care.